Please. Uh, we are on the record this morning in the matter of the state of Georgia versus Cleef Adams et al. in 22 SC 183572. All right, Mr. Stilwell and Mr. Sharp, good morning. Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, and Ms. Renard, good morning. Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Weinstein, good morning. All right, Mr. Huey and Mr. Matthews Sr., good morning. All right, Mr. Nichols and uh, Mr. Garner, good morning, gentlemen. Mr. Ryan and Mr. Williams, good morning. All right, Mr. Atkins, Ms. Hilton, and uh, Mr. Smith, good morning. All right. Good morning, all the jurors present. Yes, Your Honor. All right, councils, um, I'm going to mark as the next court exhibit in order an email I received from uh, reports to be drafted by Mr. Weinstein at, at 11.08 last night. No, 11.05 last night. And asking the court to inquire about the the capability of Dexter Montgomery to testify. Mr. Weinstein, unfortunately, your email does, is, is not a, a best representation of a forewarned judge as a happy judge. Why do I say that? I remember back in the fall of 2022, I ruled upon your objections as to the photographs of Mr. Montgomery. And I ruled at that point in time that the photographs of course, subject to a foundation, would be admissible.
to show the extent, as the state asked, of the of what this particular victim victim's injuries. So I already was on notice as to Mr. Montgomery, and so should you. So my question is, why, as of last night, the first thing, did you then bring this to my attention when you could have brought it to me yesterday or you could have brought it uh, some other time? And don't give me the for want of belief because you have just as much of an opportunity to inquire about Mr. Montgomery as, I, as, as, as the other side does. Uh, you're absolutely correct, Your Honor. Uh, there is no reason that I could not have brought this. So we're court working court. this weekend, right, I guess, right? Whatever the court orders, okay. I will be available. Right. Okay. Um, Your Honor. Uh, and I apologize for the late notice because no, you are that's correct. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, come on now, really? When I sat here last night before we left, anything else got to take up? Anything else got to take up? Prompting everybody. And I mean, it is, it, it's, it's not gotcha lawyering at this point in time. Because remember when I told you the people in the sit in the box, as you said, the longer that they go, the more that it's more difficult for other things that are unintended to happen. So we need to keep them happy and we need to also keep them involved and engaged. Them waiting on us is not being involved and engaged. It's I, not. I agree with that completely, Your Honor. And again, I apologize. But once I came to that realization last night. Uh, felt, after a year of considering this issue? Uh, yes, Your Honor. That after coming to that realization last night, I just believed that I had to file that request of the court and I could not let it lie. I should absolutely have come up with that earlier. You are correct. And again, I apologize to the court for the delay. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Is uh, Mr. Montgomery present this morning? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, are there any issues under um, 601 that I need to, that I really do need to consider? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Your motion is denied, sir. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yeah, I believe um, one of the witnesses, state witnesses, to be called this morning is going to be uh, CS Tech, uh, Crime Team Technician Lynette Robertson. I believe that's the woman who was here on yesterday afternoon. Yes. We asked to come back. Yes. Uh, we were advised and had been provided with information previously, uh, consistent with the court's order. Uh, that she would be here to testify in regards to the death of Montgomery incident. And, uh, and some other instances to, to just to introduce or to attempt to introduce some other evidence. Well, that, that, that notification came on yesterday evening, um, I believe. No, I th I, yeah, from the state. They did tell us. And while we're in court, they said they're going to make a decision as to whether or not CS Tech Montgomery was going to, they were going to ask her to, in, in, uh, as well as to go ahead and uh, offer some other instances. Well, so I just love mentioned that in open court yesterday. Okay, I, I don't recall that. Uh, what I did get, however, at eight, uh, when it came in at eight fifteen on yesterday evening, she said it was going to be supposed by seven, so she's an hour and something late. Well, what I did get at eight fifteen on yesterday evening was an email from Mr. Brown um, uh, indicating that CST Robertson was going to be tested. We we're going to try to introduce other photographs, evidence through her, and it listed what those were in regards to specific intrinsic acts. There was also a link attached um, so that we could be advised and apprised of exactly what she, what exhibits presumably she'd be testifying to. Um, that link was not, I saw this email last night sometime after 11 p.m. Um, uh, it cannot be opened. Um, I'm not aware, and I'm willing to be corrected if anyone else recalls differently, that the photographs that were referenced in there. Okay. Um, are somewhere in uh, our discovery that's been served previously, uh, but they're not attached in the link, or well, we can't open the link, so we don't know exactly where they are. And so our position uh, would be that we should have been, I don't recall them saying specifically these items or these exhibits were going to be introduced to Ms. Robinson. I do, sir. I, okay. I really did. Uh, that was the last thing Ms. Love said last night. So subject to a foundation, I'll let her attempt, let them attempt to, uh, to uh, introduce those, okay? Well, I would at the very least ask, and I spoke to Ms. Uh, Ms. Hilton about it a little earlier, uh, that she at least advise us where in the discovery we've been served previously those photographs are since we can't open the, uh, the attachment that was sent on yesterday evening. All right. Okay. Good, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, Mr. Brown. Good morning, Mr. Brown. 
as it has been remarked, uh, the state did provide notice of the additional acts for which Ms. Uh, Robertson would be uh, potentially a subject to the proper foundation entering uh, certain pieces of evidence, uh, namely uh, crime scene uh, photos that were taken from other incidents related to this overall case. Um, I thought as a courtesy to share with the defense last night just to let them know as opposed in, in the effort of judicial economy and to streamline the trial as the court has been marked with. I'd like to see uh, that we just do it all at one time uh, and then um, do with them as needed later. Um, and uh, it does appear as of now, Your Honor, that um, Mr. Kurz has been able to access as he requested. Um, unbeknownst to me last night when I sent the link, I didn't realize it was password protected. I've never had such issue. Uh, Mr. Kearns did in fact send a request for approval to access such documents. Uh, I would suggest that if the defense counsel uh, would like to do the same because of the size of the pictures. Um, that is why I opted to do it that way. I can't send them ordinarily through email because it's just too large of a megabyte. Um, I can provide as a, a Chief Deputy District Attorney, uh, Love has uh, indicated, we can get them printed copies in the interim. I do have copies that will be admitted in court. If they want to take a look at them, um, either is an option to forego installing anything further. Okay, all right. I had a discovery link when it was served. Your Honor, it was served back in May 23rd, 2023, and it should be in the discovery 11. Discovery under Act 16 through 20. And the incident dates are from January 8th, 2015 and January 22nd, 2015. All right. Okay. Summon our jurors, please, madam. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, jury, good morning. Good morning. All right, you still sound good. Caffeine still, the levels are still high. All right. Um, before we go ahead and call, uh, call our next witness, any issues with filming him? Members of the media, please do not film our next witness, okay? Thank you. All right, um, okay, summon, okay, uh, who's your next witness? I apologize. Call your next witness. Your Honor, just take call of Dexter Montgomery. All right, summon Mr. Montgomery, please.
Mr. Montgomery, good morning. Come on up to the witness stand, please, sir. Mr. Montgomery, go ahead and sit down. Have a seat, sir. Once you get comfortable, we're going to go ahead and minister the OT, all right? Okay. Okay. All right, Lieutenant Walker. Mr. Montgomery, please raise your right hand. Do you swear firm and testify which I give to the court today will be the church to hold church and answer the church I have to do? I do. Please state your full name for the record. Dexter Corbin Montgomery, Jr. Can you spell it? D E X T E R M O N T G O M E R Y. Junior, J.R. Corbin, C-O-R-W-I-N. Thank you. Can you slide up just a little? Mr. Montgomery, good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Montgomery, could you please introduce yourself to the jury, please? How you doing, Dave? Mr. Montgomery. Mr. Montgomery, how old are you, sir? Uh, 35. 35. And Mr. Montgomery, do you have a nickname that you go by? I do. And what's your nickname? Pooh. Okay. Um, Mr. Montgomery, could you tell the members of the jury why you're here today? I'm here to seek justice for my, my injury, for my um, my gunshot wound. And Mr. Montgomery, is this your first time coming to court to talk about what happened to you? It is. Okay. Now, Mr. Montgomery, I want to talk to you about your life before you got shot, okay? Okay. Okay. Can you tell the jury where you were born and raised? Say again, sir. In Atlanta, Georgia. Hold on. I was born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia. Hold on, Mr. Montgomery. One second. Yeah, come on up. Mr. Mon Mr. Montgomery, where did you go to high school? Uh, Cobb County, South Cobb High School. And did you play any sports? I did. What sports did you play? Football. What position did you play? Defensive end. I'm sorry. Defensive end. Okay. Um, I want to I want to turn your attention to the incident to uh, where you were injured um, on April 12, 2015. Would you tell the jury how that day started for you? Um, actually, I was waking up, um, I woke up, I was in the house, my grandma, I was in the house, my grandma said she wanted something from, something from the store, so, and I asked her what she want, and I asked, and I told her I would go to the store and get it for her, 
and my little cousin was in the house and he has a vehicle and I didn't so I told him to if I can get a ride and I asked him if I can get a ride to the store because we live near the store okay. to uh, to get my grandma something you know, what she wanted from the store and who is your little cousin uh, Cornelius does he have a nickname yes okay and so where did you reside at that time with my grandma the, uh, what area uh, the area is known as Lakewood. And what store was y'all? The sit go. Okay. So Neil, did Neil come and pick you up? Uh -huh. No, he was at the house too. And he was going to, and he, he had a spot, he had a, a, a house near the area and he was going up there, that way. So I asked him if he could drop me off to the store on the way up there to get grandma when she needed from the store. Okay. So what's Neil's last name? Davis. And what's his nickname? Neil. Okay. So, Neil comes pick you up? No, he was already at the house. He was already at the house? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, so, you guys go to the store. Mm -hmm. What happens then? She was on the way up to the store, and that's when I got shot. I was in the V, I was in the passenger side, and that's when I got shot. I was in the car. Do you remember the type of car y'all was in? Yes. What type of car was that? A Camaro. Was anyone else in the car with you guys? Uh, yes, but I don't know, I don't know the name or him. After you were shot, um, do you know how, did you go to the hospital? I did. Do you know how long you stayed in the hospital? I don't. No? Okay. I mean, I can't recall my memory, kind of fuzzy. Well, not kind of fuzzy, but my memory is fuzzy. Okay. Um, were you recently in the hospital? I was. And why were you recently in the hospital? Asthma. Okay. And, and, seiz and seizures. Okay. I have seizures because of the gunshot. Now. How frequently do you have those seizures? Um, maybe about uh, like a couple every month. Do you recall anything while you guys were at the sitco? No. No. Okay. Court's indulgence, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Mr. Montgomery, do you recall going to the Sitco gas station? I'm sorry? Do you recall going to the Sitco gas station? Do I recall going to it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And in that time period, from the time leaving your grandmother's house to going to the Sitco gas station, did you have any kind of beef or anything with anyone? No. No. Okay. Ms. Montgomery, how do you feel about Neil today? I mean, he's my cousin, my family, so I love him. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been already admitted as three Bravo Bravo. Publishing three Bravo Bravo now, Your Honor. It's already been shown defense counsel? Yes, it's already admitted. Okay. Ms. Gummery, can you took, look to your left or, yeah, can you look to your left? Who is that a picture of? What, what am I looking at? I mean, what am I looking for? Right there? Yes. That's all I didn't need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how long have you known Neil? Shit, my whole life. Okay. Are y'all Like I said, in my family, so. Okay. 
Mr. Montgomery, do you know a person named DK? No. Do you know a person named OG Bentley? No. Do you know an individual by the name of uh, Rodney Allison? No. Do you know a person by the name of Walter Murphy? No. Have you ever had any kind of contact with any of those individuals? No. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Montgomery, good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you, uh, can you hear me okay? I can. All right. Just have a few questions for you, please, about what you just testified to. Um, if I heard you correctly, uh, you talked about the day that this incident occurred back in 2015. Is that right? All right. Okay. And if I heard you correctly, your testimony was that you remember on that day um, that you woke up in, in your house over in Lakewood, correct? Right. And your testimony is that you were at some point going to go to the store to get something for your grandmother. Is that right? Right. And you were going to go to the sitco right. uh, to get that item for your grandmother. Right. Um, do you recall what it was you were supposed to be getting for her? No. Okay, but, but you you do recall that you were, that's where you were going to go and get it from, from the mm -hmm. sitco, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay, is that a yes? Right. Okay. Um, you said Neil was at the house. Right. And there were other individuals at the house as well, is that right? Right. Now, uh, you got in a vehicle. Is that correct? Right. And is, is it your testimony that you got into a Camaro? Correct. Okay. Were you driving the vehicle or were you a so, passenger? I was a passenger. You were a passenger in the vehicle? And you went to the sitco uh, where you were going to go get that item for your grandmother. Is that correct? Correct. Now, uh, do you recall how many people were in the car with you? No. Okay. And do you recall um, anyone in the car having any weapons, any guns? No. Okay. Um, when you got to the sitco, um, is it, am I correct that you never exited the car to go into the sitco? Correct. Okay. I never even made it to the sitco. You never got to the sitco? No. Okay. Is it your testimony that uh, you were, this incident occurred, you were shot before you even got to the sitco gas station? Correct. Do you remember exactly uh, where you were when that actually happened? On Brownsmere Road. Okay. Coming, going up Brownsmere Road towards Jonesboro Road. Okay. So you drove from the, from where you were originally, going up Brownsmill Road, correct? Correct. And at some point, uh, before you got to the sitco, uh, there was a shooting that left you injured. Correct. All right. Um, D'Angelo White. Who is D'Angelo White? I have no idea. Okay. Do you recall um, that at some point after you got out of the hospital, uh, you had an, an interview with um, some police officers by the name of Gaither no. uh, and Dennis? Do you remember that at all? No. Okay. Do you have any recollection of um, at least at least Atlanta police detectives coming to your house uh, and asking you questions about the incident? No. Do you have any recollection whatsoever of meeting with anyone at your house and indicating that you had absolutely no memory of anything that happened on that evening, either before, during, or after the incident? No. I understand that there, um, you don't have a lot of memory about what happened after uh, the, the incident occurred, after the shooting, but, but would I be correct that your memory is fairly clear about what happened prior to? Um, no, you wouldn't be right. Okay. But you are certain that uh, this incident happened before you got to the sit is that correct? Correct. Okay. Do you recall prior to getting into um, the vehicle, whether or not anyone got into the vehicle with any guns? Nobody. Not that I know of. Okay. Did I hear you say earlier that you are not familiar with the, uh, the name DK? Yes. Okay. Do you have any recollection of, of being asked by anyone with the Atlanta Police Department uh, about DK and saying that you had heard that name before? No.
at any time after the incident occurred, were you asked to come to court in regards to someone named DK being related to or connected with this incident? Not that I can recall. Did you ever have any communication with the district attorney's office prior to the past few months or so? Yeah, I do. They came to the house. Okay. When was that, recently? Maybe about a month and a half ago. Okay. No time back in 2015? No time back in 2015. Okay. All right. One moment, please. Thank you. I think that's all I have. All right. Anyone else? All right. Mr. Matthews. Good morning, Mr. Montgomery. My name is Carrington Matthews. I represent Mr. Huey in this matter. Back in 2015-2016, is it your testimony that you were not contacted by any member of the district attorney's office concerning any other case that involved you? Right. No one contacted you to talk about any resolutions? No. No one contacted you regarding anything? No. I just said no. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Sharp. Sir. You mentioned a cousin named Neil that was in the car. Neil. Okay. Is that correct? Correct. What is Neil's last name? Davis. And where is Neil Davis right now? I have no idea. Is he in Atlanta? Yes. I think so. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Anyone else? Any redirect? Just briefly, Your Honor. Mr. Montgomery, I forgot to ask you, can you tell the jury where you got shot? What body part? My head. Okay. Can you show the jury the portion of your head where you got shot? Right here. Okay. Where the dent is. You can see the marks right there. The staples and the stitches right there. Okay. Thank you. Can you tie the entire to the jury? Yes, sir. Can you show the jury where the portion? Right here. Where the dent is. There's another skull there. And you mentioned you drove it. You guys were in a Camaro. Is the Camaro your memory today? Yes. Mr. Montgomery, how has being shot affected your memory today? It makes me not have one. It makes my memory go in and out. And do you remember leaving the sick go and then getting shot? No. I told you we didn't make it to the sick go. We got shot before we made it to the sick go. Permission to approach your honor? You may, sir. I'm showing you what's been pre-marked as states exhibit 4, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha, and 4, Bravo, Bravo. Do you recognize those photos? That's me. Is that a fair and accurate representation of yourself? Is that a fair and accurate representation of you? Yeah, that's me. What about this photo? That's me. Which one are you talking about, this photo? 4, Bravo, Bravo. Okay, all right. That's one. There's more than one. Yeah, two. Thank you.
four, bravo, bravo. For admission. Four Bravo Bravo and four Bravo Bravo Alpha. All right. Any further objection? And permission to publish. Right? Is that a photo of you before? It is. Mm-hmm. And about how old were you at that time? I have no idea. Probably about maybe about 14, 15. I'm now publishing states four, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha. And you have four, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha. Yes, sir. Okay, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha. Bravo, Bravo, Mr. Montgomery, I'm now showing you what's been admitted as four Bravo. Bravo, what is that? It's me. You're an accurate representation of yourself. It is. It's just after you were uh, shot? Yes. I think so. I'm not sure. you say, Mr. Montgomery, that uh, the DA's office spoke to you recently or within the past few months about the case. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You didn't hear me say that. No? No. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, they didn't contact you back in 2015. Is that right? Right. Did they ever notify you um, that the person who was um, convicted of shooting you, uh, Mr. Walter Murphy, had been had struck a deal with him? No. They never told you that either? No. All right. Thank you. Anything for Permanently or temporarily, excuse Mr. Montgomery. Permanently. All right, Mr. Montgomery, I'm going to permanently excuse you as a witness. You're 
free to go. Just don't discuss your testimony to anybody except the attorneys in this case. Okay, well, thank you for coming today, sir. We're going to take a uh, comfort break for about maybe 10 minutes or so, and then we'll uh, stage your next witness here. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll do that, and then we'll we'll uh, see where the day leads us. Okay? All right. We're in recess. 10 minutes. All rise. All right, uh, let's get back on record. Uh, Sergeant Ingram, all our participants back? Yes, sir, everybody's present. Okay, good. All right, who we summon our jurors, please? Yes, sir. Your Honor, when it's appropriate, can I speak on record when it's appropriate at the end of the day? About what, sir? Just what happened, just so the record can reflect. I, I, Mr. Steele, <laughs> I control certain things, okay, and that's the, just the housekeeping, okay? The witness here, the seat was soiled. That's what had to be cleaned. Sergeant Ingram was the person that noticed that, and we took care of that. So I think we can leave it at that point. I wasn't referring, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Connor, but I wasn't referring to that. What are you referring to? Um, the Salma Court properly granted um, victim impact at exclusion under Walla W-A-L-L-E-R versus state it's been cited previously I could get you cited if you need then I just want the record to reflect since it's not going to be on camera when the state called Mr. Montgomery 
he came into the courtroom. He was not already seated in the um, witness chair. And he came in the courtroom and my word would be shuffled in with a cane type uh, object, like a, um, a, a, um, a stick type of cane. Staff. A staff, okay. Um, and he sat down with the help of a victim witness slash investigator for the Fulton County DA's office who sits often in your courtroom on the district attorney's side, comes up at times, talks with the district attorney who's closest to the jury. The first question from the honorable prosecutor was something to the effect of whatever the record shows, tell us why you're here, I want justice for the people who did this. Whatever the quote is, I don't remember, but it's something to that. I then asked to approach. The next question was also victim impact. Your Honorable Court stated that tried the case, that leave out victim impact. We appreciate that. And then when we're leaving, when the witness was asked to leave, he was struggling, my, my view, he was struggling to get up and he was being helped again by the investigator with DA's office in front of the jury. A juror actually got up and gave room. Um, and I just want the record to reflect all that because you, you already ruled no victim impact, and it was breached, my word would be intentionally, by DA's office. Um, and I believe that that goes against what we're doing here. Okay, um, uh, I'll, uh, since I, since you're crafting that for the record, I'm gonna craft what I saw. I saw a witness who had physical limitations come in our courtroom, who was helped by the DA's office and our sheriff's team to sit down. And that was the only thing that I believe that the record should reflect in craft. So and to leave, and to leave, and I think that that would be appropriate for any witness that we have, Mr. Steele. So I'll note it for the record, but I'm just putting on what the court observed. And uh, is there anything else? Um, the only other issue is the state, um, I say, intentionally violated the court's order to leave out victim impact. Okay, but I've already I already ruled upon that. So you ruled upon motion limine granted. They do it. You tell them not to do it. I mean, but you objected appropriately, and I and I ruled on it. So, okay, all right, thank okay. you. All right, yes, sir. And I was okay. not getting into that other matter, but I'm I just, sorry. I understand that. No, 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 it's fine. But I wanted you to make sure that when we that there was no other communication with any other jurors. That was, I, you know, we that I controlled the housekeeping and other other things to keep everyone in good health and uh, and for your uh, protection. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Your next witness ready? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Um, let's call some of our jurors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right, State, call your next witness. Good morning, Your Honor. State calls crime scene uh, technician uh, Lynette Robertson. What's her last name, sorry? Robertson. Robertson, okay. All right. Ms. Robertson, good, good morning, madam. If you could please approach the witness stand. Come on up. Madam, once you get there, before you sit down, if you would be so kind to uh, turn and face Sergeant Ingram and be sworn as a witness. Okay. 
My name is Lynette Robertson, L-Y-N-N-E-T-T-E, Robertson, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. Good morning, Ms. Robertson. How are you? Good morning. I could be better. Um, are you employed? I am. What, what do you do? I'd rather not say. Okay. Um, was there ever a time that you worked for APD? Yes, there was. And does the APD stand for the Atlanta Police Department? Yes, it does. Okay. And uh, what was uh, your official role at the Atlanta Police Department? Which capacity? Okay, um, was there ever a time that you served as a crime scene technician? Yes. And uh, can you describe for the jury what your duties and responsible, uh, responsibilities were uh, in that role? As a crime scene tech, I am to respond to emergency calls, um, process crime scenes as they happen. And um, when did you uh, begin working at APD? Um, I don't recall the exact year. Um, I've been working with them for 14 and a half years. Okay. Um, and um, <coughs> are you still working with APD? No, I'm not. Okay. And um, I'm going to transition here um, to a particular day in question. Um, do you recall working on April 12, 2000, uh, 2015? I would have to refer it to money. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time, I am showing defense counsel has already been served in discovery and then pre marked the state's exhibit uh, 98 Bravo Bravo. State's Exhibit 98 Bravo Bravo. Um, Miss Robertson, or CST Robertson, excuse me, uh, would you uh, take a moment to refresh your recollection with your report? And once you've done so, uh, you can look back at what that means. <coughs> okay. Uh, well, let me ask you a couple of other questions uh, now that I see you booked up. Do you recognize that document? Um, yes. Okay, and how do you recognize it? By what's on the paper. Okay. Um, does, is there a portion on there that uh, shows that you authored that uh, document? I see my last name. Okay. And um, can you tell the jury what type of information is contained in such a report that's in front of you? I'll object and read on the document. I stand the objection. You can lay a little more foundation, sir, if you like. On your own memory, without reading from the document, can you tell the jury what is usually contained in uh, such a um, What's usually contained is the the date, the incident, um, maybe the type of the, the time, and um, evidence collected, um, a narrative, a summary. Okay. And um, is the document that is in front of you uh, in the same or substantially the same condition as it was when you authored it uh, in 2015? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, and um, at this time, Your Honor, the state now offers into evidence state's exhibit 98 Bravo Bravo. Any objection or further objection to state's 98 Bravo Bravo? Um, yes, the proper foundation. Uh, can I see it, please? Yes, you may. May I approach you? Yes, you may.
All right, Mr. Adams, I'm going to overrule your objection. I'll note it for the record, okay? I'm going to admit states uh, 98 Bravo Bravo over objection. You may, you may uh, use it as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay. okay. Um, I'm sorry. Let me also add that. I'm sorry. That's later. That's later, sir. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, so, um, can you tell the jury to uh, what APD case number that report corresponds? Case number is 1510224458. And on what date uh, what is that particular case uh, associated with? April 12th. To April 13th. Okay. Um, I, you, as you'll see to your left and your honor, I will ask for permission for the witness to relocate as necessary uh, to use the board. Um, if you, thank you, your honor. If you would be as kind of uh, given, of course, uh, permission to write the case number associated with the timeline date uh, that you have just called out. service at the location of 1987 Fremont Street for a shooting. I took photographs, see attached photos. I collected a green and colored Seahawks hat with reddish brown stains. I was relocated to an intersection of Browns Mill Road and at Harper Street. I took photographs. I collected and processed two FC 13 shell casings for fingerprints. No prints of value were located. The two FC-13 shell casings were submitted into the APD crime lab for further processing. The green in color Seahawks hat that was submitted into the pro was submitted into the property control unit as evidence and no further requests were made by officers. Okay, so um, I wanna unpack some of what you just read for the jury. Um, when, um, you go out to the scene, um, you indicated that you took photos. Um, would you recognize any of such photos if they were shown to you there? Yes. All right. Um, Your Honor, I am now <clears throat> approaching defense counsel with states or what has been shown, shared in discovery process already and what has been pre-marked as states exhibits uh, 8 Bravo Bravo to 53 Bravo Bravo. Uh, then there's a jump to 80 Bravo to 97 Bravo. Bravo, Bravo, excuse me. 97 Bravo, Bravo, Madam Corporate. Days 80 to 90, what? So it will be 8 Bravo, Bravo to it. 53 Bravo, Bravo and 80 Bravo, Bravo to 97 Bravo, Bravo. Right. Okay. And uh, 
while the Defense Council was reviewing uh, those exhibits, I want to ask you a few more questions, uh, CSC Robertson. According to your report, what time did you uh, go out to the crime scene that you described just a few moments ago? Let <clears throat> me Um, the call was received at 22.01, and I was responded at 22.45. Now, I'm not good with military oh. time. I barely can do math. Can you tell the jury what time that is? Uh, no, very good. Sorry. Um, I believe it's 10.01 p.m., and I got there at 10.45 okay. p.m. All right. I am now approaching you with the state's exhibits 8, Bravo Bravo, to uh, 53 Bravo Bravo, um, and, uh, followed by state's exhibits 80 Bravo to 97 Bravo Bravo. Um, I want to give you a second to take some time to review all such exhibits. And after you have done so, you can look back up at me. Photographs of the crime scene. Okay, and um, <clears throat> how do you know what they are? How do I know what they are? Yes. Looking in the photograph. Do they, do they appear to be something that you know? That I would recognize? Yes. yes. Okay, and um, are those photographs that are in front of you now um, that have been uh, called out as state's exhibits uh, 8 Bravo Bravo to 53 Bravo Bravo uh, and 80 Bravo Bravo to uh, 97 Bravo Bravo in the same or will accurately and uh, fairly depict the crime scene uh, that you took photographs on uh, the day of April the 12th, 2015? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, have they been changed in any way or, uh, based on what's in front of you? No. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the state now moves to admit into evidence state's exhibits uh, 8 Bravo Bravo to 53 Bravo Bravo, followed by state's exhibits 80. Bravo, Bravo, to 97, Bravo, Bravo. All right. Any objection to states 8, Bravo, Bravo, to 53, Bravo, Bravo, first? All right, they're admitted. Okay. How about states 80, Bravo, Bravo, to 97, Bravo, Bravo? Exhibition open. All right, they're admitted. Um, both sets may be published as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, um, we are going to start with uh, states exhibit 8, Bravo, Bravo and go in sequential order as, uh, excuse me, uh, start with state's exhibit 11, Bravo, Bravo, and we're going to jump around here. Um, and Mr. Robinson, I'm going to turn your attention more so to the screen, um, because okay. those are going to be in a slightly different order than what, the way you have them in front. Um, so turning to your left, um, and there's actually an ability, uh, if you tap that screen, to annotate if it should become necessary. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, <clears throat> So, Ms. Uh, Robertson, I want to direct your attention to State's Exhibit 11, Bravo, Bravo. Um, uh, what are we looking at here? A photograph of the address number. Okay. And why would you have taken a photograph of such number? <coughs> the incident location. Okay. Um, and um, uh, does that capture the general area that you were in with the incident? That address number? It just captures the address number. Okay. Um, and um, is that the address number to which you uh, responded to on April 12, 2015? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we're going to now turn our attention to State's Exhibit 80, Bravo, Bravo. Okay. Um, Ms. Robertson, can you tell the jury what we're looking at here? You're looking at an overall photograph of the location. Okay. And... Um, 
Is that the home? Is that the home behind uh, the address on the mailbox that we looked at in the previous exhibit? Uh, Nova Estates Exhibit Eleven, Bravo, Bravo. Yes. Okay. Um, is it fair to say this is a landscape view further out? Yes. Okay. All right. I want to turn your attention now to uh, States Exhibit uh, Eighty. Uh, excuse me, Eight Bravo, Bravo. All right. Um, can you describe it or tell the jury what we're looking at here? You're looking at the street in front of 1987 Fremont. Okay. Uh, now, I just want to be clear. Is that, is, is that 1987 Fre the street of Fremont? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and... Uh, can you describe uh, this vehicle? Uh, was that vehicle a part of your uh, crime scene investigation? Yes. What color is that vehicle? Blue. And can you describe... Make sure I see if I can adjust this for you. Um, can you describe what you see near the rear driver's side tire, if you can? It looks like metal, medical supplies and stuff on the ground. Okay. Um, and were the doors to that vehicle open? Thank you. Were the doors to this vehicle open upon your arrival to that crime scene? Yes. Okay. All right. And um, I also would like to know, was that debris or uh, medical equipment as you have uh, described it uh, there prior to your arrival? Meaning, was it there before I was there? Excuse me, poor question. Let me re-ask. Was that was that uh, were those items on the ground there upon your arrival? It was already there when I was taking pictures. Okay. All right. Better answer. Poor question. All right. Uh, let's turn your attention now to State's Exhibit uh, Thirteen, Bravo. Bravo. All right. Um, what are we looking at here, uh, CSC Robertson? Uh, overall photograph of the back of the vehicle. Okay. Um, and is it fair to say that this is just a closer view of the last exhibit that we just looked at? Yes. Okay. And uh, can from this photo, can you tell, and if, uh, I'll have some assistance from Senior ADA Atkins, uh, can you tell if the windows to the driver's side are up or down? If you could zoom in just a little bit to the driver's side. Just a moment. Technological glitch. Okay. All right. I can't really tell. Okay, no problem. We'll, we'll go to another picture. If you can zoom back out just briefly, right there. Um, can you tell the jury what it is that you see, if anything, on the inside portion of the passenger side, uh, passenger, passenger front passenger door? I see reddish brown stains on the passenger side front door. Okay, and in your training and experience as a crime scene technician, what do those reddish brown stains seem to be consistent with? It's consistent with um, Burlight. Okay. All right. Now we're going. To, I'm going to turn your attention uh, to the next state exhibit, uh, which is State's Exhibit 14, Bravo Bravo, which is in front of you. Can you read that uh, license plate tag that is there in front of you on that exhibit? B is in boy, C is in zebra, E is in Edward. Two two zero six. And what uh, county is that vehicle registered based on the tag? Fulton. In what state? Georgia. All right. And can you tell the jury, based on uh, the rear of the vehicle, uh, what is the make of that car? A Ford Escape. Okay. All right. And thank you for the model as well. Um, and um, is this the same vehicle 
um, that was noted in your report uh, that was entered into evidence earlier in State's Exhibit 98, Bravo, Bravo. Give me one second. Sure. It's a picture of a VIN number. Okay. And um, I'm going to now turn your attention to State's Exhibit uh, 10, Bravo, Bravo. And uh, what are we looking at here? Um, another shot of the street of 1987 Fremont Street. Okay. And um, do you see anything near the front passenger uh, tire? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, from this picture, can you tell if the front drive, if the driver's uh, window is up or down? It looks down. And you can actually turn to that um, behind you if you need behind you to look at the television. Um. It looks down. Okay. Oh, it might be tinted, though. Okay, we'll go to the next exhibit, no problem. Uh, let's turn to the next exhibit. All right, um, and if you, uh, Ms. Robertson, can you tell the jury uh, what it is that is that object that is near the front passenger uh, tire? It's a hat. Okay, um, and um, that hat, uh, can you tell the jury, is that one of the items that uh, you collected and took in the evidence based on your report? It is. Okay. All right, let's turn to the next exhibit. All right. Um, is this a closer view of the last exhibit? Um, a, a closer view of the view that we had in the last exhibit? Yes. This is uh, for the record states exhibit 16, Bravo, Bravo. Uh, do you see any reddish or brown stains on that hat? Yes. All right. Um, and uh, if you Will, uh, Senior A.D. Atkins, if you can just uh, toggle up just a little bit. Um, I don't know if it would happen. Do you see? There we go. So you can move it up just a little bit more. Thank you. Do you see any uh, holes in the windshield? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, what do you call, in, in crime scene tech language, what, what would you call that on the vehicle? A defect. All right. And what does a defect typically come from? What, what do defects come from of this type in this photo, based on your training experience? They come from um, a gun and a shooting. Okay. Um, and uh, is that consistent with what you were called out for on the uh, 12th of April, 2015? Yes. All right, let's turn to the next day's exhibit. All right. Um, all right, then the, for the record, we are now viewing 26 Bravo Bravo. Uh, is it fair to say that this is just a closer view of the last photograph that we, we reviewed? Um, not the last photograph, but a close-up of, of the front of the vehicle. Understood. Uh, okay. Next day, it. All right. Um, now, based on this, this photo, um, I want to uh, ask you, uh, do you see any reddish or brownish stains with in, inside the vehicle? Yes. All right. And... Uh, Based on this photograph, can you tell the jury uh, whether or not um, you see any on the center console? Yes. And uh, do you see any, any blood anywhere else in the vehicle? On the passenger and driver's seat. Okay. 
Um, and if you would zoom out just a little bit, Senior Amy Atkins, can you tell the jury right there, can you tell the jury whether you see that the uh, rear windows are up or down? <coughs> All right. Uh, if we can toggle over to the left just a little bit, Senior Amy Atkins, does that window appear to be up or down? Up. Uh. All right. Um, next exhibit, please. All right, we are now viewing States Exhibit 28, Bravo, Bravo. Uh, CST Robertson, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the reddish brown stains and the defect in the windshield. Okay. Um, we can now turn to the next exhibit. All right. Um, is, uh, we're now looking at States Exhibit 29, Bravo, Bravo. Uh, Ms. Robertson, is this just a closer view of the defect in the window that you described in the last exhibit? Yes. All right. Um, Question uh, was, uh, did you find any, um, strike that. Next exhibit, please. <coughs> uh, for the record, we are now looking at states exhibit nine, Bravo, Bravo. CSC Robertson, can you tell us what we're seeing in this particular photograph? We're looking at the overall of the driver's side of the vehicle. Okay. Um, and um, from this photo, if you can zoom in, uh, Senior Amy Atkins, just to the driver's side window, can you tell the jury whether that window appears to be up or down? Up. Okay, I just wanted to confirm that. Now, can we turn to the next state's exhibit, please? We're now looking at state's exhibit 84, Bravo, Bravo. Miss um, Robertson, uh, what are we looking at here? A uh, closer up of the driver's side of the vehicle. Is it customary to take a few of the same as, uh, angles and shots of the vehicle or, or a crime scene? Yes. Why not going to do that? You might catch something different in the next picture that you missed in the first one. Is that you take you, several pictures. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Is that, some, is that what you were uh, possibly doing when you took multiples of each of these angles? Yes. All right. Next exhibit, please. We're looking at states exhibit 85, Bravo, Bravo. Um, is this just another such of the same view that we've had in the last exhibit? Yes. All right. <clears throat> uh, CSC Robertson, what are we looking at here? We're looking uh, closer of the inside of the front of the vehicle. Okay. Is the front inside of the vehicle. Is this coming from the passenger or the front passenger or driver's side of the vehicle? This is from the front driver's side. Okay. Now, can you look at the bottom of the floorboard where the driver's seat is? Do you see any glass? Okay. Do you see any glass on the inside of the floor? No. Any bullets? No. Any shell casings? No. Okay. Uh, did you recover any bullets or shell casings from the crime scene within the vehicle? One second. Okay. No. Okay. <clears throat> All right, next state's exhibit, please. All right, uh, what are we looking here at state's exhibit? In state's exhibit 23, Bravo, Bravo, what are we looking at here at CST Roberts? Roberts. <sighs> We're looking at a closer view of the reddish brown stains in the middle console. Okay. Do you see any red, uh, uh, reddish brown stains on the uh, passenger front passenger side door? Yes, you can see that in this view as well. Okay. Uh, next state's exhibit, please, Senior ADA Atkins. All right. And here in state's exhibit 24, Bravo, Bravo, what are we looking at? Reddish brown stains in the middle. Uh, do you see any on the uh, bottle that is depicted here? Yes. All right. Um, did, when you evaluated this crime scene, did you look in the center console for anything? Yes. Okay, did you find anything of value? No. All right. Next state's exhibit, please. Okay. Here, state's exhibit 25, Bravo, Bravo. Can you tell the jury what we have here? A close-up of reddish brown stains. Um, and uh, we're going to turn to the next state's exhibit, please. All right, CST Robinson, what angle are we looking at here uh, of the vehicle? 
We're looking at the back driver's side, um, the back inside of the driver's side. Okay. Uh, is it fair to say that this is the back rear of the driver's side? Yes. Okay. And uh, do you see any reddish brown stains in this particular photograph? Yes. Which is constituted as States Exhibit 8C Bravo Bravo. And where do you see those red, let's see, thank you. Where do you see those reddish brown stains, CSC Bravo? On the passenger seat. Okay. Uh, next exhibit, please. Okay. And what angle of the vehicle are we looking at here in States Exhibit 15 Bravo Bravo? We're looking at the passenger side of the vehicle. Do you passenger see, front. Sure. <laughs> Do you see any grayish brown stains in this particular photograph? Yes. And where do you see them? On the door and on the ground. Okay. Um, and um, uh, there you go. Do you see any inside on the floor near the uh, passenger side? Yes. And we can now turn to the next state's exhibit. Uh, state's exhibit A2 Bravo Bravo. Is this a? Is it fair to say that this is yet another uh, such uh, duplicated or similar photo uh, as the last state's exhibit? Yes. Okay. Um, and do you see anything near the front passenger uh, wheel? Olivia? Yes. All right. And what might that be? A hat. All right. Is that the same hat that you recovered? Uh, took any evidence from uh, upon uh, responding to this pharmacy? Yes. Okay. And uh, we're going to turn to the next state's exhibit. Okay, state's exhibit 83, Bravo, Bravo. Is this uh, yet another uh, similar photo that we just reviewed in the last state's exhibit? Yes. Okay, we can turn to the next state's exhibit. All right. Here at State's Exhibit 32, Bravo, Bravo, CSC Robertson, can you tell us what we're looking at here, at this view? We're looking at a closer view of the passenger side front door. Okay. Uh, do you see those reddish-brown stains that you described earlier? With reddish-brown stains? Where do you see those stains? On the door, and on the seat, and a little on the ground. Okay. Uh, next, State's Exhibit. Oh, well, well, um, if we can uh, go up a little bit. Um, to the, the actual door. Uh, CSD Robertson, can you tell this uh, whether you see or can you tell from this photo up to the, the past week? There we go. Can you tell from this photo? And if not, we can go to the next one. Uh, can you tell from this photo whether that window is up or down? Up. Okay. All right. Do you see now? If you can pan over to the floorboards, uh, Senior Aviator Atkins, can you see any glass in there on the floor? No. Um, do you see any uh, shell casings in the, on the floor? No. Any live ammunition? No. Okay, next state's exhibit, please. We're now viewing state's exhibit 18, Bravo, Bravo. Uh, is this another view of the same angle that you just took in the state, uh, prior state's exhibit? Yes. Okay. Um, we are going to turn now to the next state's exhibit. State's exhibit 20, Bravo, Bravo. Can you tell the jury what we see here? Overall view of the passenger front door of that, reddish brown stains. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I apologize. Is that window up or down? Um, slightly down. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, let's look at the um, next day's exhibit. All right. Is that yet another view of the same uh, photo? A close-up of the reddish brown stains on the door. Okay. Uh, CSC Robertson, uh, I'm going to transition from these exhibits, um, and we, we can uh, pull down that uh, uh, published exhibit uh, and ask you a few more questions. Uh, CSC Robertson, did you uh, respond to, do you remember working on January the 8th, 2000? Sure. Well, hold oh, just a second. Just a second. Do you recall? No, I don't okay. recall. Um, would uh, would anything refresh your recollection for that? Indeed. What would refresh your recollection? My report. Okay, I have now shown defense counsel who has been pre-marked in state's exhibit. Uh, Fox Trot, Fox Trot 23. 23, Fox Trot, Fox Trot. 
Kansas New York Point. Recap it in a second. Yeah. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, since it's almost about twelve fifteen, and as uh, indicated earlier, since one of your member has a appointment this afternoon, we had planned on this being a short work day. So. Um, Ms. Robertson. Um, we're going to pick up with your testimony tomorrow, so please uh, don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case. I'm going to have you report for 1230 tomorrow, and we'll start up at 1 o'clock, and we should hopefully be complete with you tomorrow afternoon, okay? Okay. All right? Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to release you at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the jury, any minister inquiry of me? Anyone? Okay, all right. So tomorrow, consistent with our earlier directions, um, we're going to go ahead and have you all report for 1230 for an anticipated 1 o'clock start time. We're going to work some about 1 to 5 tomorrow, right? Okay. Um, Okay, anything else with me? Okay, let me review with you your admonitions. Uh, as you leave, please leave your notepads in the basket. Um, go ahead and um, <coughs> just be in mindfulness that you cannot discuss the case, anything you've heard uh, in onesies and twosies as you go out, as you are gathering, uh, as you're at home this evening or whatever. It would be a violation for you to discuss this. Remember, you can also recap the testimony or recap any of the witnesses that you've heard. Of course, it would be a violation for you to listen to anything on any third-party websites, in the media, any blogs, or any, any place else uh, that purports to add any additional uh, insight to these particular proceedings. And you can only consider what's in the four walls of this courtroom as lawfully admitted for your consideration. Remember, you cannot handicap or otherwise discuss the case while you're back there in the jury room or any other places. I have not given you instructions on how to on how to consider the matter and, and we'll do so at the appropriate time. All right, um, don't go by and visit any of the scenes. And uh, if any third party should try and talk with you or reach out to you, then you would need to let Deputy, Ing I should say Sergeant Ingram and myself know immediately. All right, and, and lastly, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, most every time you're here, 
thank you for your extreme patience and thank you for the patience that you'll continue to give uh, the parties in the process of this matter. So, ladies and gentlemen, unless you have anything else with me, uh, I'll see you all tomorrow for 12.30, and we'll get started uh, as close to 1 o'clock as we can, okay? All right. All rise. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our jury has left us. All right, two things before tomorrow. Um, let me summarize the bench conference that was had before our jurors and our witness were released. Uh, Mr. Adams and um, and Mr. Brown uh, were up here at the bench and we covered uh, just ceasing at this point in time before uh, Mr. Uh, Brown decided to go into another area. So that's what we covered at the bench. Mr. Adams and uh, Mr. Brown, anything you wish to add or, or subtract? Okay, all right. That's the sum and substance of our bench conference. Okay, the next thing is um, a couple things. Please come prepared, as I mentioned earlier, if you have electronic medium, have a printed copy so we can introduce that into the record. Uh, Ms. Weaver stays very happy if you do that. Also continue to send your electronic versions of that same evidence because we have to have certain things as to uh, for, for uh, the assembly of, um, of uh, you know, of, of, of our matters that have been admitted, admitted or identified into evidence. Go, and the second thing is please as you send out uh, electronic access to whatever documents or evidence you may wish to try and present, please make sure it works. And please make sure you send it more timely. Um, not that I'm, you know, over six decades and go to, and don't appreciate having some rest, but there comes a time in the evening where I don't check emails anymore. And I suspect you all are probably in that particular category, especially if you have families and other people that you minister to. So if you could send them earlier, folks, I know that, you know, that you, um, as advocates, you have to work the task, not the time. But um, please go ahead as much as you can and send it as early as you can so that we don't have these problems. Because if you do have access problems, you can at least go ahead and deal with them earlier. Um, then instead of while your eyes are closed. So, um, all right, that's all I have. Anything else before more? Yes, Your Honor. Madam. Regarding um, the witness that we expect will be here tomorrow, we are- Who, who is? Uh, other than um, Ms. Robertson, he is also um, Investigator Gaylor, a former retired nurse, <coughs> and I, um, it's doubtful we'll get through him. Um, <laughs> we'll start, maybe, but okay. Okay. Well, what I'll do, we uh, are having the redactions that the court ruled on earlier. Yes, ma'am. In um, some of the other media that we expect to introduce through her, and we will be sending that over to counsel for the defendants this afternoon. If, um, if any of them have any problems with it, I invite them to reach out to me personally and just let me know. Um, they, I can do an answer my phone after a certain time. Um, so that's all I'm going to remember. Okay, I, I'd ask that you please, you know, excise out those things and we not make it an exercise of when they get here. I got one more thing I want to take up. So please go ahead and make sure it's complete. And if there is any other thing that they have not listed on here that we need to look at if they let me know before we get the redactions made so that we are not at that point tomorrow. Like I said, send it early so we can go, they can go ahead and look at it. Because a lot of times, I mean, you all can resolve a lot of your issues yourselves and I, it's, I'm not necessarily needed and I don't feel offended at all. So remember, 
my biggest task to you all is to keep the delay time in front of this jury down to the absolute minimum. All right, anything else? Anyone? Just, um, you probably remember, uh, entitled a motion in limiting number 48 that deals with the PowerPoint that the state sent us on Friday. Uh, I couldn't wait until Sunday and they make sure it. But, uh, there's, uh, issues that I flagged. And, okay, but did, Are they evidentiary issues in terms of terms of things that I need to take up or what? Um, yes. Very. Or is it dependent upon what is what is testified to? No, uh, some things are from the internet, and it's like um, Mr. Wayne Carter making a statement about um, don't listen to uh, the person who dresses on his album cover naked or doesn't dress as album cover, uh, things of that nature. And that would be based upon the ruling yesterday. It was hearsay, it was a statement. Um, oh, yesterday, that photograph one could have been a statement to another. Then, fact that Janice, I still don't have his uh, PowerPoint at all. And then in there are videos of Mr. Williams, uh, statements as well, which I don't believe I'm in, so we need your response for us. Judge, those matters are not for tomorrow. Those are not will be later on. We won't have that with Ms. Dennis tomorrow. Okay, when will we have Mr. Don, De Detective, retired Detective Dennis? Um, is it her or is it him? Dennis is a he. Yeah, we've had him before, haven't we? Okay, all right. Have you turned over the other um, information Mr. Steele's talking about? The PowerPoint was, I believe that the PowerPoint was provided in discovery. So that was July. In July. In July. Right, in July, which is the first round of discovery. But um, I will confirm that, and if Mr. Steele has some, a different um, set of information, I am I'm open to him calling and we can talk about it. Okay. We don't have to call this slide two, three, there's nothing there. I'm sorry, slide what? Two, three, eight. It's just not it, 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 right. it, it, it references the PowerPoint that was served in July of 2022. That okay, has it been updated? Is there now a slide 238? No, that slide was a placeholder for that particular PowerPoint. Which is a representation or shows what? The PowerPoint presentation served in discovery in July of 2022, constructed by Okay, he's saying I don't think he has that yet. He, he does. He's okay, when was it? Was served in July of 2022. You just stayed, Matt Nasty. Yes. You just stayed, sent an email where it's deposited in the process. I'll do it. Okay, when is Detective Dennis going to testify? Um, it depends on when this one. Happened. Ballpark. Well, this one being being who did, um, gave her. So, um, Bob Park, at the end of this week, since we are cut short a little bit, so either um, Friday of this week um, or next week. We only have three days. So, okay. it depends on how long everyone goes with the witness we have on the stand. All right, well, anything that I need to take up needs to be memorialized so that I can see it. And if we need to plan for it, I can tell our jurors or we can take, you know, um, we can address it accordingly. Okay. That's from the state as well as the defense, okay? And the last thing, but I think you said this earlier, the better for any redaction that gave I'm not 100% sure what is uh, being redacted or what's trying to be shown. So. Well, that's why I would like Miss Love to get that to you sooner rather than later so that it can be, you can look at it. And if you have such concerns or objections, they can be um, modified by agreement or they can be modified um, with the court's intervention. But I don't want to do too much of that, as I mentioned, the morning of we having the jury in place. All right. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Folks, I'll see you tomorrow at 1230, okay? All right, we're in recess.